<laughs> Adult wannabe motherfuckers. That's right. I mean, we Kenny's are. He's got an excuse. He's black. But <laughs> We are the epitome of adulthood <laughs> and functioning adults. <laughs> we are, yes. All right. So, uh, right now, this is the Red Eye Report. And uh, Teddy and Ashtray aren't in here yet in the call. It's just Mystic and myself, Oracle, in here holding it down. That's right, little bitches. So we're talking about opioids tonight. And uh, really, I got on this after watching um, The Crime of the Century on HBO. Did you watch that, Mystic, The Crime of the Century? No. You didn't? Were we supposed to? I really didn't know if we were supposed to or not. <laughs> were we supposed to? I thought you did, dude. No. I oh. didn't watch it. No one told us it was required. Well, it wasn't required. I just thought you fucking watched yeah. it. No, I probably will. All right. But I haven't yet. Okay. So, anyway, the, so The Crime of the Century is a new documentary on HBO. Uh, where basically they they start off with um, OxyContin and Purdue Pharma, which I believe they released OxyContin in like 94 or something like that. And um, so it's in two parts. The first part, they, um, they're following Purdue Pharma and OxyContin and kind of what was going on is they were incentivizing uh, doctors in prescribing this stuff, and they were selling the they were sending these sales reps out, and basically, you know, hey, push these fucking drugs, and if the doctors aren't going to uh, prescribe them, give the doctors money kickbacks, and there was a bunch of other crazy shit that was going on. Um, and then they even developed this terminology, pseudo addiction. So when people started to get cracked out on opioids there or appear to be addicted, uh, they said, well, they're not really addicted. They're pseudo addicted. And the only way that you can oh, defeat like it's just a mental thing. Yeah. The only way you can defeat a pseudo pseudo addiction is to prescribe more opioids. Ah! Yeah. 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 Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And kind of like when Ricky's like, "Oh, you're super high. Here, smoke this. You'll come down." You know what I mean? Like, what? Yeah, that right. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, right. right. Uh yeah, speaking of getting the super to the high. The problem is more the problem. Let's uh <laughs> get ready for a, a moment of inhalance. Teddy's going to be really pissed when he finds out that he missed the moment. Oh, well, maybe inhalance. he shouldn't be black. <laughs> Is it because Teddy's camera feed isn't in here that mine's like zoomed out and split on two? Yeah. I'm assuming. Yep. I can handle that for now. <laughs> All right, your majesty. <laughs> you have to handle it the whole motherfucking time. How about that? <laughs> All right. That's fine. Moment of fine inhalance. Like here we go. So, yeah. These doctors, they b bought this they, hook, line, and sinker with this pseudo addiction <laughs> bullshit. So they're just pushing these drugs out. And um, in the documentary. So was the study uh, sponsored by Purdue Pharma that basically said, oh, yep, that's pseudo addiction? Yeah. It, it, <clears throat> they actually would up. They actually wrote the, the language, and they took a— so there was an FDA official that was, um, you know, trying to protect people against these drugs. Well, this guy left that the FDA, and he went to work for Purdue Pharma. And basically, he was allowing them or showing them how to avoid— he worked with. 
What's that? I thought it was a DEA that guy worked with. Maybe. DEA. Yeah, I think it was a DEA because he they, they were trying to shut down. They had that that ISO thing, or whatever. They could shut down a factory or place. Mm. And he and he told him he and he, uh and he uh because they were filling orders that they knew that the place was going from four thousand pills to four hundred thousand pills, mm-hmm. and th- and that should they that that should have been signed it's like and shut it that down. That county couldn't support that kind of request, sort of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And ba- so what Purdue Pharma did is they hired the insider guy, and then he allowed them to circumvent all the laws and shit. Yep. And yep. this was all they were cl- the the sales reps were sending messages up to the leadership the whole time they're like, "Hey, um we're seeing some crazy shit going on uh in these communities." Like one of the sales reps in the documentary, he talks about going into the doctor's office um and the guy, like the doctor is like, you know, like he had just done yeah, a, a line of oxy before the sales yeah. rep went in there. Like it was, it was really like, bad. A line as in he snorted oxy? Yeah, he snorted yeah, he a, snorted line, a of line of oxy. oxy. <laughs> Damn, he, was wiping that's no- he was wiping his nose as the guy came into the office, he's saying, yeah. Because isn't uh isn't oxy a time release? Well, that was well, yeah. The thing. Well, that's, that's, that's that was the thing with people with people. Uh, they were people crushing it. When you crush it up, it the time release on the outside doesn't work. So can, oh yeah, so it doesn't work. Dose. Right, and that's, that's what why people say, like yeah, and that's why people are ODing because they were crushing it up and snorting it, or they were adding water and, and putting yeah, it in a spoon and shooting it up, up. and shooting right. it up, and that was they were getting a full dose, God, not the twelve hour dose. They shooting. Shooting. Yeah, in yeah. this shit. So shit. is. I didn't realize this, but oxycontin is considerably stronger than heroin. Yeah, yeah, it's synthetic. Yeah, we're pretty bad. Yeah, because they, uh, yeah, yeah. I I didn't know that, <laughs> but um, so oh. the fucking Purdue, they were doing this shit with the oxycontin. People are dying, and then the same stuff has been going on with fentanyl within the past like five or six years. And this wasn't Purdue Pharma. This was another company, another distributor. Um, and that's the second uh, second part of the documentary. So really, what I wanted to do with this is I knew that Big Pharma, they were assholes and they were not looking out for, you know, the the good of the public. But I didn't realize that it was this bad. This egregious <laughs> of a crime. I <laughs> and Teddy, the hell was that? I don't know. So Teddy said he didn't. It was my daughter? Oh, okay. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. And you had a point, no, Teddy. No, and I still, I still don't give a fuck. Okay, good. Now explain what you mean about that. Okay, this is this is the same thing that happened back in the in the late eighty in the eighties and nineties with the crack ap- epidemic. Right. Yep. People, mm-hmm. people were. They had this cocaine. The, the cocaine for cocaine for the white people was fine, but once once they started rocking it up and selling it in the <coughs> ghettos, they didn't care about it. Yeah. They only cared about it once it got to the white neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Right. They didn't care about the black neighborhoods, and the, all they did was they locked all those people up. And I, I, I'm sorry, some brothers in the projects don't know how to rock up crack unless somebody shows them. Because mm-hmm. it's a chemical process. Well, it's even worse, Teddy, because crack was invented to fucking keep minorities right. down. It's, right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and they, and they, uh... right. I mean, so, in, so in now, a way, I guess this was too. It just, you know, right. it, it was, this delivery was too, method. It was delivered, yeah, yeah delivery method. It was delivered it was... in a uh, a method that was legitimized by the <laughs> whole medical right. it's like, process. It's like it's like yep. the guy was saying in, in the show is because because these weren't these weren't people out on the corner selling shit. These were guys in suits doing this shit, and that's why it was allowed to happen. And yeah, so I, they're I, just I, look, as big I, a piece as a shit. Right. You right. Know right. They are. Yeah. 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 And they are. And I got just as morally bankrupt. Just yeah. as morally bankrupt. They are. Right. But I, I, I just don't. But I, it's, it's once, once, like I said, once you start ravaging white neighborhoods and getting into, 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 uh, it's okay to fuck your cousin Virginia. Then everybody, oh, we got to stop this. We got to stop yeah. it. And it's uh, what one big problem I had with that show is they kept saying how this affected all people, but they didn't show any people of color being affected by it. That's true. It was all white. Yeah. It was all white places. Mm-hmm. Florida, Virginia, Ohio. It was all. They, but this affects everybody. But it, but it was yeah. no. I mean, it, it, that's mm-hmm. uh, it's. Yeah, fuck. Well, and because, yeah, <coughs> is it because places of color, it's like, well, if I need hard shit, I can get it? Well, no, is I that think, just I think a stereotype I, I, of I think, people I think of color? It, I think it's just because they, they didn't give a fuck. 
They did. Mm-hmm. Well, you also once it, there, once it started wrapping um, little pieces of Americana, like little little <laughs> cold pounds of pieces of Americana and shit. That's when it bothered them. And there that's are what studies, that's my problem is. though that show that the medical community as a whole, when it comes to like uh, deciding pain tolerance, like when they're supposed to judge a patient, you know, like does it seem like they're in pain or not? When they're a person of color, like they totally uh, le- deal it, like they don't think that they're in pain when they really are. But like, oh, if it's a white person, oh yeah, my god, they're trying to get so hurt. It's like yeah. it's been scientifically proven. So like, it may be that they very uh, they're much more less to prescribe oxycontin to people of color. Because they also probably have that prejudice. Right. Uh, yeah. just uh, prejudice they're, right. they're just trying to get it for. They're just trying to get it for right. Yeah. I mean, I, that could be part of it, but mm-hmm. yeah, just go sell it. They're, they're not really in pain. And like, it's, it's. I mean, like, I, I'm pretty these, sure they like, could be a part of it. Poor white people. But, uh, it's like, oh, well, they, yeah, they must have got an injury at the factory that they no longer work for for the last fucking fifteen years. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just I kind of my trip. It's yeah, right? crazy. Fucking like, can't get up in my truck. One of the things that struck me in the documentary as well is they actually had to up their opium production. So Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. I had no idea Johnson and Johnson were heroin yeah. dealers, bro. Johnson you know how much baby, Johnson. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a baby shit I brought for the motherfuckers. Right. So they're the ones that get all the opium and yeah. they had to up their production. So they set up straight up opium fields in Australia. And the yeah, only Tanzania, difference yeah. Only difference between that shit and the stuff in Afghanistan is the stuff in Tanz- in uh, Australia is genetically modified, modified to produce yeah. more and be stronger. Yeah, and, they, oh, wow. and they gave and they were given incentives to the farmers who produced the strongest crops, not the wow. biggest crops, the strongest crops. Yeah, I mean that's crazy, dude. I mean, yeah, well, it's, yeah. It's also crazy to think that we can't. Like, sure, it's a synthetic opioid in the sense that it's very processed through a pharmaceutical company. But, like, you'd almost think that they could make it, like, a complete synthetic where it's, like, really? You still have to have the the core it's, it's chemical yeah, from they, the they need the core, they need the core the, chemical. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah. yeah, that core chemical. Yeah, yep. Right. There's he no he way around it. Point, though, he does make a good point. Why can't they synthesize that core chemical? You know what I mean? Like, what is it well, about I'm, that? Well, I think because it's... Is it just uh, cheaper? Is it just cheaper well, to plant? Well, that thing I think it would be cheaper to grow it and stuff than just... Probably, it would be to... because also, though, you have to always think that uh, those chemicals, like, they're just a molecule. And um, sometimes, like, the natural process that creates that molecule is way yeah. easier than trying yeah. to, like, fucking, oh, we'll just take this atom and smash it and well stick yeah the re- the one. amount of research and development you would have to do to develop it probably yeah. is just astronomical compared to what it would compared cost to just, to just plant just the fucking opium yeah, yeah and grow it yeah the poppy or whatever. i mean there's no synthetic cocaine really right it's still all <clears throat> comes from coca leaves yeah exactly mm-hmm. <clears throat> scoozy yeah and you know they'd be pumping that shit out if they could make right. it right yeah we'd all be fucking doing bumps <laughs> yeah so I just have a list uh, from therap.com, and these are some of the big takeaways here because I'm pretty high. And... We always rely on yeah. the yeah, We, we can't came in hot them. this night. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even have my what sexies yet. I got to throw those in there. So yeah, co- you dicks can give us five fucking minutes. According to the, the documentary, yeah, no, Thanks, overdose Teddy. deaths in the U.S. have tripled since 1990. 500,000 of which occurred in the last 20 years. How many? So, how many a year? 500,000 divided by 20 is uh, what? 500,000 divided That's by. That's just 500,000 total? Yeah, 500,000 in, in the last in 20 years. In the last 20 years? Mm-hmm. 20 years, yeah. Oh my God. Okay, compare that. 500,000 yeah, in the last 20 years with like coronavirus it. in the last year. Yeah, that's twenty five thousand a year. More people die from fucking car accidents. Car accidents. That's true. I don't know. Maybe this is all bullshit. Not that it's necessarily bullshit. Well, maybe but maybe these crackers need to learn how to fucking control their buzz. Relative. Yeah. So <laughs> it seems like a lot more die from that though. Like that doesn't seem from like what? Crackers. Overdoses? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also it makes it always makes the news usually because it's in a sense a crime scene. 
So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of part of it why it, it seems like, you know, you don't always hear about every car accident, but, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's also part of that whole, like, what way is it being framed on our perspective of like, oh, this is, it seems like these are the deaths that are really happening now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to say white America. Yeah, right? Poor white America. So uh, they had a big settlement that happened in 2019 that got the news. So this was Purdue Pharma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were sued for all these wrongful death things and whatnot. <sighs> $8.3 billion settlement. Jesus. And yeah, that's the reaction. You're like, Jesus Christ. But guess what? None of that money was actually paid out because... Really? Yeah, because Purdue <laughs> had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Oh, yep. Oh, of course they did. <laughs> Convenient. So, so it was... Yeah. Little legal switcheroo. Exactly. <laughs> Complete bullshit. And... You know, according to this documentary, uh, it's shit's still rolling. It's still happening. Of course uh, it is. The, yeah, it is. Of course it right. is. Because I mean, you saw you saw in the in the, in the documentary, which is which is great. People should watch it. the The way the way they paid off pretty much Congress mm -hmm. to to get their shit through. Like it's like the one guy said when they, when they didn't when they didn't like the rules that were made, they just started lobbying com, com, uh, Congress to change the rules, and that's what what you do. I mean, what kind of a person? So the uh, two uh, reps that were introducing these laws that were basically opening, removing all the barriers uh, for these uh, pharmaceutical companies. One was, I think, Pennsylvania, what? and the other one was like West Virginia. Oh, I, you made me one. And, you know, they're up there and they're advocating this. And these are two hard hit areas where a lot of the residents do. Marsha, Marsha Blackburn, one of the one of the people, one of the rep representatives on there. Yeah. Uh, her district is right next to mine. Yeah. And, and it was fucking and, and, and she was and she she didn't give a shit. <laughs> Tennessee was being ravaged by fucking. I mean, it's, it's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what kind of a person are you when you're up there and you're you're putting these laws in place, basically killing uh, individuals that are in your district or whatever and lining your pockets instead. I mean, that's just, that's special, I guess. So, yeah. Some bitch. Some bitch. Check it out. Crime of the century. Opioid crisis. Uh, you know, it's a kind of a buzzword that you hear every once in a while. And it's right. just really interesting There's to so see. There's so many crises. Oh, yeah. Everything's a fucking crisis now. But seeing how these pharmaceutical companies just, I mean, blatantly changed every law in their their path. <laughs> like, disregarded everything. They're straight up fucking... <clears throat> I think we're going to see it again. Cartels I think, I think, and shit. I think, it's, I mean, I think we're going to see the same thing again, but I think we're going to see it with uh, with marijuana, not with um, not with opioids. Now, why would that be marijuana if it gets uh, legalized? Because, um, what well, I, I, I not 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 legalized. What I'm saying, okay. So, when it, like, uh, remember in the part of the uh, documentary where the guy uh, he said that one county where they had like three plank pain clinics or, or like ten or whatever, mm -hmm. and in two years they went to like 140. Yeah. Um. Uh. When you go when you go to legal states like Florida, where where if you have a medical card or medical states, you have a medical card, you can buy uh you can buy marijuana. Like when I was down in Florida, I saw so many places down there. Where you just go, like the same thing. You just go in, get your cards. Like get a card here. Mm -hmm. Like go in, and get a card, and go buy some weed, kind of thing. So that's right. why. That's kind of like saying, here's like, an easy way to get your uh, medical <laughs> I mean, yeah, reason to gonna, get your weed. I mean, oh you're yeah. Always gonna have those, yeah. You're always gonna have those doctors that are okay with selling medicine. When I that, got okay well, with, okay I mean, with, so. the place that I got my card from was Canacare Docs, yeah. and the, the assessment or whatever. I had to fill out some forms. It was like a five minute phone call, <laughs> and they, I, they gave me my medical marijuana card. But here's the difference, though. You can't. You're not going to kill somebody with weed, right? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I don't mean the killing part. I just mean the the legislation kind of deal. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or the or the doctor selling selling script. Kind of thing. Yeah, and or, I think that makes a big difference, cards. though. I mean, it's like, oh no, you're condemning your your district to eating a bag of Cheetos or you know, 
or well, whatever. I, I, think, I don't think I think the principle is the same. It's, it's, I it's don't selling... know that the principle is the same because there's a lot, probably a lot more doctors out there that believe that pot should be legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to them, prescribing it is well, especially a big now deal. compared to like you know what I mean. Ago? Like, but right. opioids, you got to be pretty fucking morally bankrupt. Mm-hmm. To get someone deliberately hooked on those when they don't. Need. Well, especially what we know now, and how so right. many doctors, because <clears throat> once you become a doctor, um, you are like your medical literature is like your channels are all part of the mainstream medical literature, and of course Purdue Pharma is not going to let like anything controversial come against their new oxycodone mm-hmm. or oxycotton. Mm-hmm. Of course, the whole thing was that it was time release, so like you can't get addicted yeah, to it. Yeah, you can't get addicted to it. And so the doctors, I mean, doctors don't have time so to fucking like sit down and go through yeah. all that research. They're fucking working with patients, and uh, that then it's easy for them to think that they're prescribing the right thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, it, okay, that comes down to the okay. So when the guy, for me, you said that they, you were talking about how the doctor didn't have time to, to think about all that shit because he's he's taking care of patients. There was one, there was one guy, the the guy who turned turncoat on the Indian guy. I forget mm-hmm. his census or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. info infotech or whatever. Um, they, uh, he was saying that there are three types of doctors. The one who's always taking cramming a patient to see to whatever blah blah, blah to see to make money. Uh, there's a one. There's a guy who wanted you to try to sell him on it and wanted to know everything about it. And then there's a scientific guy, like the red, the yellow, and the green, or whatever. And he stayed away from the green and yellow, and, and he always went to the red. And when I'm looking for a doctor, that's the kind of doctor I stay away from. Those red guys who always try to who don't who don't want to take time to answer my questions or always seem in a rush. Mm. So I, I kind of think I kind of think that takes, especially with my son and things, or guys who are always trying to give me give me uh uh. Uh, what do you call prescriptions or whatever? I'm like, I don't, want, I don't want, I want to try to take care of it naturally, kind of. So it, it's, it, I think that kind of takes into personal accountability when you search for a doctor. Mm-hmm. I just take, you know, anybody. Well, right. another thing to too account. is like you had that combination of uh, uh, people, um, and a lot of times, like you said, that the gateway was, oh, fucking threw my shoulder out at work, you know, went to the doctor, you know, and back then we're just like, oh well, here the doctor's like. Fucking new drug, oxycodone. It's yeah. you know, it's an opioid, but it's time release, so it's slow, so your body doesn't get addicted to it. That's his narrative in mm-hmm. his head. Fucking doles it right well, out. Well, and and it's a and it's the that appeal to professionalism. The doctor gave right, it to the you, doctor. So it's yeah. Well, be and the guy, it, yeah, who threw his shoulder out, mm-hmm. it's like, right. well, these are okay. It's legitimized exactly. because mm-hmm. the yeah. doctor gave them to me. Yeah, they're legal drugs, man. You know, those are the best. <laughs> some, uh, okay. There are some of those people who. Who didn't realize till the fact that like their doctor went on vacation and they like needed a refill and the doctor wasn't available to do it and they like started going through withdrawals. They had no idea they were addicted. Uh, David uh, David Dawes said that uh, tramadol is a synthetic opioid that was presented as a safe alternative, which was which was has worse withdrawal symptoms than the than the real stuff. Hmm. That shit made me sick when I tried it. Oh, uh, tramadol. My mom, my mom gave me one. Yeah. Oh. I was in pain with my hip. Hmm. And it made me sick. What was it called? Tramadol. Tramadol. <clears throat> Just too powerful. I, I've taken I've taken them when uh when I had surgery and stuff and uh, uh when I was older um and I took morphine when I was younger because I'm allergic to Demerol but uh I, I don't I don't like, I never liked the way they always either put me to sleep or made me feel like. I, I didn't – yeah, I don't I don't understand that muscle relax heroin kind of mm-hmm. feeling. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't get it. I don't – Well – love it. I mean, all right. Some people it's do when love you're it. Trying, I mean, it's, it's a, why it's it's a true escapism. And, and stuff like that, but I don't – I don't. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, you know. I haven't uh, – Yeah, I'm not trying to escape my body, though. I haven't like, had I heroin, but I've had here. oxycodone. I don't know how – DH. D8. Um, oxycodone compares to oxycontin. Um I'm sure it's, it's got to be similar. To strong. Um, I also had the... Um, if I remember any. I've also had the <clears throat> full, like, morphine um, IV machine where they give you a button. Mm. Oh, yeah. How, what was yeah. that like? Well, you could... They told me I could dose every 10 minutes. Um, and this is, like... I was going through oral lesions. So, like, my... I had sores on my tongue and stuff, and like flesh on my tongue is oh like my falling God. out. Oh my God. Yeah, what it's the fucking fuck? nasty. That's why they gave me 
and the thing comes in it's like an iv that's it's it's like covered in plexiglass and locked and there's like a big syringe of morphine in there and Mm. so like you can't no one can like get into it but and it's then like computer time so i could only take it every 10 minutes but shit man i didn't need 10 minutes like i just remember like wake i'd wake up in excruciating pain and it's just like oh oh," like like she's like hit it ah and then you know in like a couple minutes just like you feel that wave of relief sorry "Ah." because whatever the you know the the morphine like interacts with that part of your brain that senses pain and it just like floods out that pain excruciation and i would then just melt and sleep for maybe about half hour an hour like like tell it wears off and then i kind of wake up in pain and then i did that for a couple days i actually Mm. remember having like when i had to go home and they just gave me pills like I was super cranky. I'm like, is this what it's like with just draws? Just like, rah! Yelling at my sister and shit. They gave me morphine when I dislocated my hip, and I remember thinking, this is some fucking good shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They gave me morphine Holy when I was 14 fuck. and I had my Dude, uh, appendix taken out. When I, was in, uh, when I was in the hospital a couple years ago, it, it was fucking weird because like, she's like, are you in any pain? I'm like, not really. She's like, okay, well... If you are, just let me know. We got uh, either Tylenol or morphine. Oh, shit. (laughs) And I was like, what? (laughs) She's like, yeah, that's what it says on the chart. You can have Tylenol or morphine. And I was like, (laughs) that's that's a pretty big jump. Jump, right? Yeah, that's a huge (laughs) jump. Did you say that to her or did you say, give (laughs) me the morphine? Yes. I was like, what? No, I don't. I just said I don't like painkillers like that. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah. So did you take it or did you just skipped on it? No, I wasn't in pain. Oh. Like I'll take the shit if I'm in pain. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not a big fan of just fucking. I don't move to begin with, dude. I don't want to be a fucking. <laughs> That's true. It won't take much for your own. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't wanna... yep, yeah, I don't want to die. Sleep. Like... <laughs> your heart's like. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> They start sounding like a fucking drag <laughs> engine and shit, like. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, there weird. you go. Huh? Yeah, that's uh pretty weird. So that's the fucking opioid shit. We're moving on. Okay, Travis here. said. Uh, Travis said he had a guy where he used to work that went in for back pain, and they mixed his morphine with another drug and overdosed him. What? And they did he die? Did that dude die? Travis, yeah. did he die? Holy fuck. Like, overdose, like, you can overdose, but if he was in the hospital, that hopefully revived him. Damn, dude. Well, I, I don't... Because if they're giving you this certain they, dose... Well, they make designer drugs like that that they give you to take home. Doctors can come, you know what I mean, where the pharmacist well, has said, to mix certain shit. Yeah. Wow. He is dead. Oh. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh shit! Damn. Poor bastard. Mm-hmm. Right? Lawsuit. You know, yeah, to die from a medical fuck up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of these people too. That these cases, it starts with like a a problem, like a car accident or whatever. They go in, they say like, well, you know, um, this one one woman, her husband, he was like, yeah, she was managing it with Tylenol, uh, and then. He she started going to this opioid clinic. Yeah. And the dude was putting like insane amounts of pills on her. The doctor, and he's like, We gotta treat your pain, gotta treat your pain. And he fucking killed her. Like straight up killed her. Like there were this- a work related injury too. Fuck that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's insane. Dude okay. That me and Teddy know uh when he lost his leg. He's oh, like, yeah. so painful, like the ghost pains and shit that, that occur. They put him on Oxycontin. He was taking three 80 milligram Oxycontins a day. Wow. That's a lot. How many milligrams? That's fucking 80. Like the biggest ones they make. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Those are for people who are just like, what, in a complete torture state. <laughs> Well, he said getting off of it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do. He's like, I huh. lost a leg, and it was nothing compared to fucking 
Wow. Withdrawals from fucking Withdrawal, Oscar. Yeah. That's crazy. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that was such a slow process. Because mm-hmm. you have to slowly wean yourself off. Yeah. Can't fucking cold turkey that. All right. <clears throat> we're moving on to the what's sexy, where we tell you what's sexy in this world. And I'm up first with Buttfucker3000. What? <laughs> yeah, I love it. <coughs> so. Hey, look, it's my new it's my new handle. Okay, you want me to change my name to, what What'd you want me to change my name to, Mystic? Boomtown. Boomtown. Boomtown, yeah. I chose yeah. Buttfucker3000, bro. But- better name. <laughs> All right. Way better name. Boomtown was taken, so they suggested <laughs> Buttfucker3000. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> In uh, uh, St. Joseph County in Michigan, this happened a a few days ago in a Michigan court. Apparently, they're still doing Zoom shit uh, with their court. And uh, (laughs) this dude comes on there with a screen name on Zoom that says Buttfucker3000. And the fucking judge lost his shit <laughs> on this guy. <sighs> so uh, here's a, a bit of the conversation. <laughs> Good morning, sir. What's your name? Middleton said when Saxon joined the meeting with the screen name Buttfucker3000. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Saxon said. What the fuck? <laughs> yes, Middleton said. Nathaniel Saxon, sir. Your name's not Buttfucker3000, you <laughs> you-hoo. <laughs> so he, uh, he fucking kicked him out of the court. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What, I wonder who was fucking with him. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I, I, th- I think he said, so Saxon said, he said he was apologetic. He said, your honor, if I may explain... I think it was whenever I set up my Zoom account or whatever. But fucker is my phone pairing name for my Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> oh my god, really? <laughs> oh yeah, blame it on your Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Manufacturer <laughs> called it butt fucker. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I have some weird name for my fucking for my uh yeah. my Alexa downstairs. I'm pretty sure I put something weird or stupid on it just, just to be a dick, so I, mean, I can see that. Oh, I do this shit like I'll name my TV stupid shit and whatever. I, yeah, I, I, I can see him doing that. Oh God! Imagine just being in that How same courtroom. How embarrassing, though, dude. <laughs> he, he blamed it on his Bluetooth, but he really, he really is an S uh, to B B S M D B S B S whatever. Yeah, that's oh what yeah, it's yeah. Like. No, that's his <laughs> Pornhub account. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Real. All right. Next up, we've got Teddy with Super Bowl champs. Yay! Uh, I played a great game of football today against a great opponent. <laughs> it was a, um, it was the first season in our in our new fucking our new uh, league in Madden Twenty. Uh, is the Lions versus the Bengals? Uh, the Lions were uh, victorious, my first Super Bowl, and a, and a, uh, a friend. So I forget how about that. This is how we know it was a video game: it was the Lions and the Bengals <laughs> versus <laughs> the Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> The NFL would never allow that shit. They're like, yeah, we got to, we got to, somebody shoot a quarterback. We got to, we got to I don't think this. Detroit and Cincinnati would allow that. Right. Because they're pieces of shit. Hey. <laughs> Just kidding. Watch it there, Troubles. Just kidding. All right. Next up, we've got Mystic with Letter Kenny. All right. So I never really, I mean, I've seen this show a few times. I haven't watched it yet. Years ago. Everybody raves about it. <clears throat> it's not. It's not the best show in the world, but it's super Canadian. Uh, Oracle is on top of it, obviously. I don't have to tell him like Astra. Uh, <laughs> so this is a conversation. I don't know if you guys can hear it. No. This is a typical Letterkenny like, scene. It's really here, weird I'm, show. I'm going to turn it up a little bit here. All right. <laughs> restaurants in the United States. Fuck, figure it out. That's what I say. So figure it out. Got no vinegars on the tables. No Kraft peanut butters. Figure it out. Fucking figure it out. Fair enough. Forget those fucking all-dressed chips. No ketchup chips, neither. This is what the this show is? I can't, I can't hear anything. Letter. Yeah, you I can't got hear six sh- different types of Captain Crunch, though. I'm, I'm going to turn that. up the, 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 the show. Talk comedian talks about it on the Just for Rears. Can't remember his name. Though. I don't hmm. think the audio is coming through for us. Not for you on on this thing. It was coming through on the stream. 
Oh, okay, let me turn this. All right, so yeah, with uh, Letter Kenny, that's what they do is they stand around and they fucking talk real fast Pretty at much, each dude. other. Pretty much, but just listen to the conversation. It starts getting really funny. Huh, that's weird. All right, I mean, it seems cool, and I do like Canadian comedy, so. Well, when we talk over it, it doesn't help. Dude, we're not going to sit here and have dead air <laughs> for fucking five <laughs> minutes while you listen to this. It's it's great. Just go look at it on your own. Time. I agree with Oracle. I don't want. I mean, it's it's yeah. But see, you're in the you're in the Canadian you're in the Canadian comedy and stuff. So I mean, you got it. It is Canadian comedy. It's, so. it's super. Boys. It is very very. It's it's even more Canadian than fucking Trailer Park Boys. It is yeah. real tra- more, yeah, it's, more, it's yeah. the, more. It basically Trailer Park Boys are the hillbillies of Canada. These are the hicks, the rednecks. Nah. It, it that's that's how I would describe it. It's a it's a fucking very well written show, but it's weird as fuck. Hmm. Like I just I, I don't know if it's a, a just a cultural difference, or if it's just made to be that fucking weird. But it's funny, so yeah, check it out. Boom! Ooh. You can always go to Canada and find out. And what is that on Mystic? What I watch it on Hulu. I think it's mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's on some fucking Canadian channel so okay. like that's where it originally airs but mm-hmm. i watch it on... all right next up we've got Word. ashtray with stone <clears throat> in exile uh yeah a little uh documentary on uh well you can get it through amazon prime i'm not sure if it's on prime it's at the exile moment on but... Main street or whatever so the the album exile on main street um this is a documentary about the creation of that album because is that the one that was made by Scorsese? Um, I don't know. Maybe Scorsese. He was interviewed in this documentary. I'm not sure if he was the one who made the documentary. I didn't look he at the made credits. a documentary about the stones. I just don't know. I'll, I'll um, just keep talking. Anyways, but this was about that specific album and how at the time it was, uh, I don't know. The, some manager to the record company or whatever basically legally had That's taken cool. all like the royalties and rights from their music from all those albums up prior. And the like England had this ridiculous tax where it's like, oh yeah, you know, like you're a rock star, like basically 90% of what you earn goes to us. Damn. And so 90%? it was. Yeah, something like ridiculous like that, and because basically the money that they would high. put, the money they would put into doing tours, like the the revenue, the amount of tax they had to pay from the the actual gross income they got, just like swallowed basically all the profits. And then this manager had, um, like the rights to their creative, like catalog so they left um they they left this manager and they left england to that's why the name was exile on main street because they uh like to avoid this tax they basically decided oh we're gonna go down to uh um keith richard's little villa in france and it's like of course the thing is at the time like they are full-fledged rock stars but um as a uh, uh billy keys um put it he was a saxophone player he's like you know we're be a young you know, rock and roll star living in france with all those hot women well that's shitting in high cotton for you I don't understand what the fuck you're talking about. Shitting in high cotton, I can only imagine is like if you're in a cotton field and like you're in high Jesus cotton. Jesus Christ! Like don't, don't try to explain. To... Uh, it's it's not it's not a literal term. Shitting in high cotton. Yeah, it's the euphemism. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, man. cool. I, so it's a good so, documentary. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the uh, yeah, these guys basically like it was this kind of drunken commune in this like old historic french villa that they were renting 
And because they were rock stars, they had just like all this kind of, all this money and all this drugs and they they recorded it in the basement where they had to like keep people in different rooms and shit and they had a Sounds like it, a dungeon. This is 1972, remind me. <laughs> 1972. Yeah, they didn't do DIY. There wasn't then, You know what I mean? Well, they to record uh at their level to then try to record an album um they had basically it was one of those like rec- mobile recording studios where it was like a semi truck mm. with like a studio built into it and then they just ran cables into the house in all these different rooms and then like the producer had to run around to each room and tell each uh, person like all right wow. you know like we're getting ready to do this song blah blah, blah. and the thing is like it was just kind of a 24 7 like usually it was kind of built around um Keith Richards, like, up, oh, right, I'm up, you know, and I'm like, you basically said it was like a long time of fiddling around, like fooling around, like just shit, sound, playing shit, playing shit until all of a sudden something we catch, and then like they wake up, oh, hey, Billy Keys, we need you on sex, you know, hey, fucking, what's his face, we need you on drums, you know, like, get everybody up, all right, we're recording, and they just, right. they, so, did so it. it was a good documentary, fucking good. <laughs> Fucking delicious. Okay. Well, I don't have to watch it. You just told me about it. Right. <laughs> All right. Like, damn, you never would. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to fuck what you think. <laughs> Where we go tell you to stick a that meat Scorsese. hook up your dick hole. That Scorsese film was called Shine a Little Light. Or Shine a Light, by the way. That was a live concert, yeah. And yeah, we're not talking about that it. anymore. Never saw it. Never saw it. I just didn't know what it was called. I stopped watching it. See how I got so to the old. point? It was like three sentences. Cool. Move on. All right. First up, we have Mystic. Three sentences. <laughs> Dial down the fucking realism. Dial down the fucking realism, dude. I play in Major League Baseball on, on fucking Xbox. I get, I get called up to the show, to the big leagues, right? Start out. I'm a starting pitcher. Fucking crowds cheering. I throw up three balls. Oh shit, he's gonna get walked. I throw a fucking heater right down the middle and catch a line drive right to my face. Fucking breaks my <laughs> cheekbone. And I'm out for fucking 30 days on the 30 day IL. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I won a baseball game, but it really like okay, I just made is... it to the show okay, and then this fucking about... game. Okay, you're also complaining about about Madden's little ag- algorithm today. What is it? I mean, you what what do you want from video games, sports games? Oh, I like I baseball my better. It's to just be we're super realistic. Well, yeah, they're, they're trying they're trying to simulate I, the sport. That's what they're doing. I get it. I mean, but just chill the fuck out on it. <laughs> <laughs> simulate as like, well you know as what you I'm can, saying. I got it on down, dynamic. Sometimes. I got it on dynamic, so I'm pitching at fucking like it's like a Hall of Fame level. Yeah. And it's fucking it, dude. You get rock. If I get I got rocked with a fucking uh, a uh, grand slam in the first inning couple games ago and i couldn't recover dude i couldn't hit a fucking pitch over the plate because like it's it's that much harder like it rumbles and fucking moves around on you and shit because you're all flustered like goddamn man oh the the controller yeah maybe like, you gotta the game go deliberately that, fucks with game, you if you're yeah, in flustered. that game there's a there's a um there's a circle around each pitch that you have as a, there's a meter and the fuller the meter is the better you are all, you are with that pitch mm-hmm. or with that certain pitch whatever Oh, well, you also have a confidence. It, it goes you also have a confidence. confidence yeah, have, you have a confidence meter also. To try to get that, and... to try to get that, it makes it even harder by making your controller rumble while you're trying to <laughs> yeah. cue that. In. Yeah, because exactly. it's trying yeah. to simulate the yeah. realism and the pressure. I see what you're saying. The pressure, the pressure. The mound is in after well, he just gave you know up what? I don't want it that goddamn realistic. Game. And Matt, yeah. can you turn bullshit. it off? Jesus Christ! Madden's just bullshit. Madden is just Madden doesn't do a lot of bullshit. They do. They that that one is just bullshit. I don't think you can turn that off. Well, I think I it's just on him. dynamic in that mode. I think that's what the game does. Hmm. But well, I like it. I, I, it's it's, 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 it's fun. Spider, it certainly makes it a lot harder. That's for fucking sure. Hmm. See, I'm not I'm not I'm not playing as a pitcher this time. I'm gonna start a pitcher character here in a little bit. But um, right now I'm I'm the second baseman. Doing sure. pretty good. <laughs> All right, that's it. Boom boom. Yeah. All right. Boom, boom. Next up, there's me with. JK, I wasn't serious about upending your life. Whoa. So, Whoa. fucking, 
a few weeks ago. Landlord. Told you that I had to move. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the landlord shit, yeah. Right, the landlord. She's like, she just came in. She's like, hey, um, your lease is going to be in done at the end of the month and uh i'm gonna either sell it or i'm gonna raise your rent by 30 percent. so at that she point didn't talk to you prior to one month from your lease ending no no she, 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 came, in, she came in did a walkthrough remember yeah. she had to do a walkthrough walk and then he was and pissed because like if she was, i remember talking walk, about the walkthrough like, but i guess you didn't well, i didn't realize you had that I guess short it, of a notice well yeah. maybe it was more like 45 day notice by still the that's the, true yeah, it's very to be short. like, hey, I'm selling this, and right, right. before your lease is up. Yeah, very usually short. check in like three months before. Hey, you're gonna renew right. or what? Right. So anyway, uh, we were looking around at places at apartments. One place, a dude was a raging alcoholic. He's like, yeah, can live here. Oh well, yeah, that guy. But I, uh, I get I was totally drunk in and I that. get into fights all the time, and that crackheads just stole all my shit. So. We didn't go with that place. The crackheads was a, that was the red flag, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, can't have any black people around here. This drunk guy. A lot of crackheads gotta be black. Crackheads, <laughs> yeah, just like be crackheads. Be black. What the fuck? There's that misconception. There's yeah. that I mean, really, stereotype. I mean, really, your white presumption. <laughs> Right. I mean, right. baking soda is fucking cheap. Everybody can make crack rocks. What the fuck, why, why no, but you... I mean, for real, Teddy, they were black. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> where where we went, Rhode Island? Because they're black. Or they're yeah, Rhode Island. They're white. Yeah, you're Rhode Island. They were fucking white. He knows they were white. He just wanted to say black. He was ashamed they were white. Aren't they two <laughs> sides of the same coin? <laughs> Meth heads and crack heads? I don't know. Anyway, so we were looking at all these places, and... Uh, we get a, a, a text crack from, lease. <laughs> from the fucking landlord, and she's like, oh, you know, I started doing working with contractors, but they were too pushy. I can't deal with this right now. I changed my mind. I'm not. I, I'm going to miss you guys. And we have already signed the lease. We start moving this weekend. It was just well, like... Uh, <laughs> She oh. made a bad business business decision. Yeah, so yeah, this right? this whole thing <coughs> was completely unnecessary. Yeah, unnecessary. Yeah. But yeah, you're already but invested you, but, in it. Right. Right, but you have a you have a better place. The place you looked at is better, right? Well, I mean it's <laughs> move it in. it's better in terms of um heat efficiency, that's for sure. Because they actually right? pay but the what utilities. About location and whatnot. Location you know? is, I mean this is a really good location where we're at. Um, where we're going where is next now? to a park. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I would say, not as prized of a location, but. A new location. Yeah. But it's, hey, it's yeah. still pretty good. No, what, no white or it's black crackheads. I mean, hey, moving up. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If she's a bitch enough to do that once, she's going to do it again. Do it again. So that's true. Yeah, exactly. Might as well move. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> How many years were you there? Three. Three. Yeah, no, that's a that's a long enough. Uh, Does it have usually where a good landlord for, bro. like respects you after three years? That you're not fucking late on rent and mm -hmm. you're not trashing the place. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we've got Ashtray with murder suicides. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is one of those fucking terrible tragic stories where um a uh friend from the Baldwin Street from back in the day um who I haven't seen in years but was only uh wasn't even really in the news but <clears throat> friends and family hear it where it's like uh her boyfriend at the time I don't even know the real <laughs> details but it's just like boyfriend at the time Gets in some dumb, jealous, mad rage and uh, kills her and then kills himself. And it's such a shitty fucking way to do things. And when I was a kid in high school, I wasn't, no, wait, I wasn't even high school. She would have been. It was uh, this girl who rode on my bus route. And, um, some dude across the street invited her over, and no one really knows what happened, but they got in a scuffle, and he beat her with an axe handle, and then shot her, and then killed himself. And it's just such an absurd, like, mess, you mm. know? Like, 
the amount of tragedy it creates on, on all sides. Like, right. imagine also being the parents of the... So, yeah, Travis says he was 13. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I was 12. Um, and when this all happened, you know, and it's a small town of, like, 700 you know, to 1,000 people, if you count mm -hmm. Tennyson, like, that, that's fucking drama. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. And... Um, it it was uh, a friend was uh, over recently, and like we we were talking about this story before I even found out about this recent one from a friend through Baldwin. Um, and it's like there was never really any we like subscribe to go to the newspaper archives and like find like whatever happened like the. After the news, you know, it just kind of like fell out of the news. But it was this tragedy that w she she was on my bus route. Like, I rode to the school with her every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, fucking it's sucks. Up. Yeah, you know, it's like, so fuck motherfuckers who think like, oh, I'm just going to kill someone and then kill myself so I can't be punished. Right. Fuck. God damn it. One to ten, how drunk are you right now? Um. Oh, right now, probably seven. Yeah, I'm thinking this is a seven ashtray. Yep. <laughs> That's what I was guessing. Seven. Yeah. All right. I, I, I can tell. I can tell after years. Next up, we have <laughs> Mystic with these two dicks. <laughs> Mystic. That's not me. Oh no, fuck. it's Teddy, bro. Oh, Teddy. Sorry. What is it with you? Scale one to ten. Christ. How high are you right now? Yeah, I mean, really, what is this? Yeah, I'm probably like a seven. <laughs> no, you're like a nine, bro. You just call. You just yeah, read ten. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's more. That's you're pretty, more. You're pretty that's high. more nine-ish. Which nine brings me to Teddy's fuck. Are you think these right. two, tits. Mr. Dang. High, Mr. Pointing out Mr. High. All right, I, I, I was, I was a bit, I was a little bit hurt tonight. Okay, I have not, I have not jacked <sighs> off, fallen asleep, and wa or walked in front of my camera naked in like years. And you fuckers couldn't wait five minutes for me to get home from work. Oracle said he was starting it, man. Yeah, well, yeah not, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, really? Oracle. Ah, he's I'm the one that sure. starts the thing. What do you no, think I'm, I fucking made him start it? He did. I guess I, Dude, Mystic I, made I, me. I, he's like, I'm gonna I, fucking. I, I, I if you have a child, I'm gonna kill it. His mother. Yeah. I've played video games with you, Mystic. I've I've heard grown men complain that you made them buy a game. <laughs> and it's not plenty. To which I laughed. It was pretty funny. they did it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. But they, yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah. I just want to say, fuck you two dicks. Dude, we thought fuck you ran out up. of gas because you're in Tennessee. They don't have right. gas there. Probably did. I've got, I've got gas. There's no, no I, gas. I, I've got, Everything I've got the messages off. right here saying, I'm pulling into my driveway right now, five minutes. And we're going live. I'm like, way to go, dicks. <laughs> I didn't Eight see him because I was pulling out of your mom. Oh. But um, That's one of the last <laughs> avenues to leave. Boom. <laughs> all right. Fucking hate That's all you it. white people. That's the uh, fucking show. Go fuck yourself, murder suiciders. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, murder shit. suiciders. Pussy and people dick. who don't wait on friends, you know? Those people. <laughs> Oh, Except come on. Yeah. Just put them right on that same level. <laughs> I mean, really. Oh, oh you think we're same, same kind of evil. Same kind of evil. You just don't make quite as much mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's our wow. show. We're going to be here every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Central. Make sure you oh, join the conversation at theredireport.com or facebook.com slash redeyereport. You can apparently twiddle us at yep. red eye underscore report. Like us, share us, or fuck us. We're down for whatever. I'm Oracle. This is Ashtray. Ah, I got him for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Y'all are shouting. This is Ashtray. <laughs> this is Ashtray. I'm going to Okay, so this is. This is we're, dealing, we're dealing with an 11 ashtray and we're dealing with a 9 oracle. This is kind of. This weird. is ashtray. <laughs> are you having a stroke, dude? Y'all are insane. Y'all are fucking retarded. Yeah. Having a stroke. <laughs> Oh, is, is this ashtray? Do you want one more? No, it is, is it ashtray? <laughs> I had enough laughs. Like I'm good. Waldo. Thanks.
Oh my god. <laughs> Kifa dude. Waldo. Nega Waldo, bro. You can't shake it. Maca Waldo. <laughs> All right, Where? and this is the Red Eye Report. <laughs> where's where's Mecca Waldo? Red Bot.